have you heard that it's sometimes important to synchronize clocks across lots of computers and do so with extreme accuracy down to the billionths of a second? I won't talk about the applications today, but people will typically look to the Precision Time Protocol, PTP, defined in IEEE 1588, which is also part of the time-sensitive networking standards, to do just that. Now, one of the critical parts of PTP is measuring the time it takes to propagate what time it is. So if I send what time it is to you, well, you're going to experience a delay, speed of light delay, or maybe more, between when I s sampled my local clock and when you received that message. And some, and often the speed of light delay is a meaningful amount. It can uh, add up to a lot compared to nanoseconds because this is a nanosecond of speed of light. And so it's important to be able to measure that speed of light delay between the transmitter of the time and the receiver of the time. And we're going to look at that today in practice uh, with a hands-on demonstration. So let's say we have computers A and computer B, and we want to measure the speed of light delay between these two. And for now, we're going to assume that there's a single ethernet cable connecting these uh, and it scales up and we'll, we can look at uh, larger, more complex systems in the future if, um, if it makes sense. So A sends a message and when that message is transmitted, it captures a timestamp T1 using some local clock. When that message re is received by B, it captures the receipt, the time of the reception with T2 uh, as T2 using, of course, its local clock, which is different from A's local clock. Sometime later, B sends another message back the other way and it captures the timestamp T3 when that message is transmitted. And this delay actually does matter and we may go into a little more detail in the future of the trade-offs between doing it right away and doing it sometime later at your leisure. That message is then received, T4, which is captured using the same clock, of course, at A that was used for T1. And then B, sometime later, hopefully right away after T3 is captured, sends T3 and T2 over to B, or sorry, to A, which now has T1, T4, and T2 and T3. It has all four timestamps. And it can then calculate the link delay. So if we take T4 minus T1, which are captured using a single clock at A. And if we take T3 minus T2, which is captured using a local clock at B, um, we, can, uh, we have basically the, um, the total time, and we can subtract the think time of B, let's say, or the delay time. And now we have two link delays. We can divide by two, and that gives us one de link delay. So we have T4 minus T1 minus T3 minus T2 divided by two, and that gives us the one-way mm, speed of light over, let's say, an ethernet cable. And we're assuming here that the speed of light is symmetrical and, and uh, those, those kinds of things. So let's take a look at a setup that I have right here. I have two computers, a, we'll call them A and B, and I have an ethernet cable right here, which is connecting them, a rel relatively short ethernet cable. So this one will be sending messages over to B. B will be responding. Actually, computer B will at the same time be sending request messages back to A, which will also be responding. So they'll both be measuring the link delay uh, at the same time. Um, this window up here is the computer that is the A computer on the left. This computer, this window here is for the computer on the, on the right. And what we have is a configuration for the time transmitter, I'm calling it, and we're timestamping using hardware timestamps. So when the message arrives at the ethernet interface, it's timestamped using the ethernet hardware itself 
as opposed to waiting for the message to go all the way up through the operating system to the Linux PTP instance, which then captures the timestamp. So in this case, both are configured to use hardware timestamping. But I'm actually going to change that. I'm going to uh, use software just in, for the purpose of demonstration. All right, so we're going to run Linux PTP here. And we're, we use the, uh, the particular interface and we're using the time transmitter configuration that we just looked at with lots of logging. And here we go. So it's running and you can see the P delay um, timeout is happening. It's sending these messages, but they're not being received. They're not being um, uh, responded to. Now, on the other side, on the right, we have a system down here, which is going to measure the link delay, but it's also going to plot the link delay. So uh, do Rx. So I have a little script here, which does PTP4L with the interface. It also sends it to a Python program, which is going to plot it in real time. So uh, do Rx and let's give it, uh, I don't know, uh, 300,000, 300,000 as the, 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 y, um, the y scale. All right, and we see the link delay being, uh, being plotted. Now, remember the system on the left is using software timestamps and so the operating system is uh, in the path and even worse in this particular case the system is going into a low power state and it's waking up now and then and so there's enormous jitter on the timestamps being captured on the system on the left the a now to fix that what i can do is i can on the left computer do a um, run a stress of the cpu with four threads and what we see is okay instead of a uh, hundreds of thousands of, uh, of P delay, we're getting mm, uh, tens, 33,000. So let's, let's rerun and let's, let's um, zoom in. And we'll use, uh, we'll zoom in a bit. So now we're looking at 40,000 nanoseconds. And it's uh, actually much more regular because the, the CPU doesn't have time to go to sleep. It's because it has the uh, stress um, threads running. Okay, but it's still, let's call it uh, 5,000 nanoseconds of jitter because of the operating system and the scheduler and so on. Okay, so I'm gonna let, I'm gonna stop the stress and I'm going to stop the PTP for all on the left computer. And now we're going to change the timestamping to hardware. So now we'll have hardware timestamping on both sides. And now we'll run again. And what you can see is that the, the path delay, the link delay is it's single digit nanoseconds. It's a relatively, uh, relatively short cable and it's about what, uh, uh, seven tenths of um, seven nanoseconds per seven. It's about 70% the speed of light or so. Well, let's, let's zoom in because that's not too interesting. We're going to go down to uh, maybe 40 nanoseconds as our Y axis. Okay, now we can see that the link delay is varying, but thanks to the hardware time stamping, the variation is down under 10 nanoseconds, under 10 nanoseconds. And again, these are just off the shelf PCs, happen to be Intel PCs. They happen to have uh, I-225, I-226, um, 2.5 gigabit ethernet NICs in them. So that's pretty good, that's pretty good. Uh, single digit nanoseconds, let's call it, uh, between two computers with a, uh, a fixed cable. Now I have a longer cable, 
let's uh, swap out the shorter cable just as a verification that this is uh, real and let's see what happens. So I remove the ethernet cable and I have a uh, somewhat longer ethernet cable which I will now plug in, click those in and PTP uh, recovers actually pretty quickly. And now the P delay measurement is, let's call it 30 nanoseconds, plus or minus, well, eventually it'll be plus or minus about the same amount because the timestamp granularity is the cause of, of the jitter. So this is pretty cool. This means that those two systems can measure the delay from one to the other in the uh, with an accuracy of uh, single digit nanoseconds, let's call it 10 nanoseconds. And in the future, we'll look at actually sending the time from one system to the other and then subtracting out this speed of light delay from one to the other. And then there are some other things we might want to look at in terms of uh, if there's a network switch in the way, there are ways of actually compensating for the queuing delay in the switch as well. And there are ways of compensating for the delay between the CPU and the Ethernet controller. You'll actually see over here that there's a flashing blue light, which is basically coming out of the CPU and saying when the CPU thinks the second is happening. So it's putting out a, putting out a, a pulse per second. And um, in the future, I also have this uh, little device here, which is uh, USB to Ethernet. And I replaced the oscillator with a temperature control oscillator, which has a frequency stability that is three to four orders of magnitude better than what we have on these PCs. So I can plug that into a PC and suddenly, if we compare it to a GPS, all right, I'm getting my getting ahead of myself. So <laughs> let's let's wrap up. So we've measured the link delay by sending a message in both directions and having four timestamps and taking the double difference divided by two. And I did actually measure software, 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 hardware, 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 software in both directions and, and, and plotted these. And what you can see is the link delay for hardware hardware is uh, very small and very, very, uh, has very small jitter. And then you can see up, up higher, we've got uh, a much larger delay, but more importantly, delay variation. So you don't actually know how much to subtract from the transfer of time when you have link delays that are varying that much. And by the way, this is a log scale. So massive difference and huge benefit of having timestamping, which is very commonly available in Ethernet hardware. So I have a lot of other things that I may, uh, that I have planned to talk about, but uh, please do feel free to um, Put comments down below. I'll uh, read through and, and respond. Uh, this is my first attempt to explain some things on uh, my own uh, videos on YouTube. So we'll see where it goes. Thanks for watching. Clear to the end.